I'm Alan, uh, and today I'm presenting this lightning talk, Unifying Hybrid Clouds, Our Journey Through a Multi-Control Plane Service Mesh. Yeah, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I know I'm younger in this photo. Yeah, uh, I'm a software bit engineer at Booking. And uh, just to put everybody on the same page with the terms I'll be using, a little bit of Service Mesh. We are in this today, so everybody knows this. But yeah, Service Mesh is this thing layer uh, with primary uh, object of uh, enabling easy service-to-service -service communication. Uh, we have the data plane, where this service-to-service -service communication happen, and have the control plane, which uh, configures this data plane. And the control plane uses uh, information from service discovery database, is also configuration storage. So no new information for everybody here. Uh, where we were at Booking at the time, uh, our service mesh was deployed in 2017, so we are using that for seven years now, using in my proxy. Uh, it's covering Kubernetes, bare metal, uh, other cloud providers like GCP, AWS, uh, with more than 100,000 uh, sidecars deployed now. These sidecars are uh, deployed in 98% of the workloads that we have, more than that, actually. Our data plane is solo uh, is four nines. Uh, we are, we, the SLI per se is more than that, but it's very hard to measure. And uh, our control plane was built in-house and tailored to our needs, of course, seven years ago. So we are now figuring out all the caveats and things. So the limitations that you have now, uh, we have int uh, limitation integration with some cloud providers and uh, the high cost of implementing new features because you need to build it from scratch. So we start evaluating Istio since version 0 0.2 and when it reached version 1.3, uh, we evaluate it again and uh, it would cover our needs. So now how we replace the control plane? the magic that happens and controls the data plane layer. So we have this complex uh, setup, uh, a bunch of services talking with each other, uh, very chaotic, and then you have the operator there that's turning the knobs and making this communication happen. So how we place this uh, operator there with a shiny new technology? And how we did that? Uh, to enable services from migration to one match to the other without changes, we cloned our data plane from the control plane that we have today to Istio, and they both have traffic in the same way. So to change and void with Istio proxy, simple as that, no change in the service, you just uh, replace the sidecar and use it, start using Istio proxy start in, instead of Envoy. So the idea is simple, uh, the implementation sometimes complicated. Uh, so today we have something like this. We have part of our fleet running Istio proxy and part of a fleet connected to, old, to the old control plane. The services don't need any change. Uh, it's transparent. There's just one line of uh, configuration change uh, for the service owners. Uh, how we keep these two mesh syncs? Uh, we have a service that translates configuration from the control plane to Istio resources, and uh, Istio connects to this service using the XTS protocol. Uh, we register the service as an, an extra config source on Istio. Uh, challenges that we're facing now, and we faced in the, the past, we're still working on this. Uh, the X implementation uses the state of the world, so which not applicable for dynamic environments, uh, because for every request you need to send everything. Uh, we overcome this limitation, like creating sharding. Uh, the NAC response is not fully implemented. The configuration rejections happen uh, later in the stack on Istio. So there is a limited visibility of errors using this uh, approach. And it's very hard to deal with dupli uh, uh, duplicated configuration. Uh, we need to ensure that the configuration is unique. Otherwise, Istio goes crazy and sends some con configuration to the sidecars. So yeah, that's it. I hope you will like it. Uh, I'll be available anywhere if you want to talk about it. Thank you. Uh, he asked about how many services we're running now. Uh, we have more than 2,000 uh, services. I'm not, uh, I'm not able to give the real number, but have more than 2,000 services right now. Yes. Uh, right now, yeah, we're any 20% uh, on Istio and 80% on Control Plane, but we also have some services that are in the mid-migration. 
So have some workloads running Istio and some uh, workloads running the peer envoy. Yeah, I have a question. What would you like to see happen when an Envoy NAX config within Istio? How would you like that to sort of bubble up to the user? Uh, right now, we have in the logs message like uh, error something uh, happened. It's hard to track the research uh, that's there, and uh, also the because we have sharding, so all the configurations run at the same time. You need to track the sharding, and then you need to find the configuration. Uh, for some errors, it's easy, like typos or something like this, but others are more complicated to find, and it takes time. Uh, yeah, that's. All right, one more question. Nope, you answered them all. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you.